Now, another person who really made a big impact on that game was Richie Moonga, as usual. It's, it's, it's a classic um, growth from... We've seen Cody Taylor's try against the Highlanders, so they've been doing that nice little tip short ball, and we know Richie, sit, when he sits in behind forwards, he's the best exponent of sitting out the back, and when the forward pulls that pass back, he, he can split that, those two defenders in there, because if you, if you bite in on that short tip ball where Cody runs, and he scores that try against the Highlanders. Uh, there's a nice little gap there for Richie to run into if that defender shoots off out in here. And he did it twice, straight after um, half time, which actually led to that instance of Brad Weber having to make that tackle. But he's the, he, he is the best exponent of that because if that hole shuts for him, he's also great at giving that short ball there or pulling out the back to create space on the outside. And, and that goes back to the decision making I was saying about Oteri and, and Plums for the Blues before. Richie's a master of sitting in behind those forwards and making the right option and, and picking the right guy to create the space or find the space and find the opportunity for himself or for others or for telling the forwards to play and you know, use that tip or carry themselves if nothing's on out here. And, and it, it was just a further example and exponent, but they'd show him, you know, Cody scoring that try in the first two rounds and that he hadn't actually been running a hell of a lot himself and it was just like he'd pulled trigger you know, in the, in the, in the second half there and, and got his running game and, and just got him behind them and it just started creating opportunities and it just shows that he's just always thinking a little bit further ahead. So now going into the Blues game, you know, the Blues will be thinking, well, we've got to watch him run. But then you've got to, you, you can't forget about the Cody Taylors running that short ball. So you've just got to make sure you cover all your bases in there. But then you've also got to be able to cover in here and the kick space. So there's a lot going on, a lot to think about. And it's perfectly timed going into the big test match. And it's, it's just, you know, orchestrated perfectly by, yes, New Zealand's best 10 at the moment you know, to be able to set up a game plan and, and go into, you know, Eden Park on Sunday afternoon, sun's on his back and, you know, pulling the strings in, in, a, in a Crusaders jersey, which is exciting for the fans because both teams, mm. I believe both 10s, I reckon they're the two form 10s in the competition that are, that are, you know, putting their teams in great position but also making great decisions both sides of the field. Yeah, I think just on that, I think it's um, yeah, those are all valid points. I thought Richie was was outstanding on the weekend, but I think what kind of helped there was just the, how Ford's laid the platform for that. And um, you know, you probably saw that at the back end of that start of the second half or at the back end of the first half, just around you know the Chiefs had to make over two hundred tackles. They attempted two hundred tackles. Sorry, so you know, look, I think for that first forty minutes it was a bit of a stalemate, and then you know, through all those tackles, and you know, you talked about how courageous they were. You know, we had I think we had twenty three minutes of position. And with um, in hand, and then the Chiefs had eleven. You know, so you know, going at that back end of the back end of the, the second half, you know, it's pretty tough when you made all those tackles. You know, so um, but it just came back to our, our platform as well. I thought our boys did really run out, ran out breakdown. I know we talked around at half time. Um, we probably didn't get the, the tempo and the kind of clean out right, and we probably let them off with a bit of pressure due to that. So we had a bit of a focus that come the second half, and then um, if you look at that second half, we. Got into their 22 three times and scored three times during that time. So and they were actually um, a high, high phase count. I think yeah. for Fitzy's try. They made you work for it. Yeah, they did, but yeah, it yeah. was 15, 16 phase. We actually did finally break them. But you know, for that kind of uh, pressure to be built, you know, you've got to be able to. We've talked about it. Everybody's got to, got a role in that in that in that play. So, I um, mean, you know, Richie doesn't get those opportunities to be able to go out the back as, as a pivot. And get to go through that line if the boys aren't animated around him and running lines. You know, you've seen Cody Taylor run that line, or it might be another person has to run that line. But you know, if they're not all animated and in sync, then Richie doesn't get to go through. So, um, yeah, it's good, good for Richie. Obviously, you know, we love it when Richie's playing well, and you know, hopefully, the learnings that we had in that second half around uh, quick ball it could be at the forefront coming this week against the Blues, who traditionally, like you said at the start, um, their defense is, is really, really great make really good decisions around you know, that tackler one plus as well. And um, they really do um, dominate the collision as well. So it's going to be an absolute balance as well. Hopefully the weather's good as well. Rico has just gone to another level. Give us the inside word. What's, what's the story here? I, I, I don't know, but he, he certainly looks um, a lot leaner. Um, the biggest thing I gave you, uh, what was it, when they played the Canes round one, just the ability that he could shut down that, that time and space defensively, I saw it. And now we've seen him on attack. Um, I just think he's hungry to make a to make a statement, and he really wants to make that All Black 13 jersey his own. Mm. 
Um, and he also really wants to see the Blues have success and he knows he's a key cog in that. And he knows when he's playing really well and being the difference that the, the city's going to have a, have a lot more success and, and get him behind the, the club um, you know, more so. And, and, and he's taking that on his shoulders and he loves that. He loves that, you know, feeling that of that excitement and, and putting a team on his back and, and he's, sort of, he's certainly delivering at the moment and uh, it certainly excites me as a fan and, and he's certainly got some wheels like, and he is just not afraid to go on the outside, is he? It's, it's that raw, raw pace and it's just uncoachable. It's just, um, it's just natural talent and, and you know, when he gets in those open spaces it's going to be exciting to see if you can do it more often than not um, against, in the, against the best team in the comp, that is the Crusaders. Yeah. If you were picking the All Blacks right now, Bryn, would, would you be able to go past Rico, considering how he's looked through the first three rounds? Oh, look, he's been he's been great. I think it's it's been a flow on uh, from last year, um, been been that squad. And yeah, look, I think he's we we'll always know how how quick and how how much expert there is, and how how elusive he is with with ball in hand. But you know, Jeffrey, you brought up a few times, a lot of times actually, around his defensive his de- defensive efforts and you know, being able to put teams under pressure with his lines, but just because he he's so quick, so. Um, yeah, that's been a massive imp- improvement in, in his game. And, and look, you know, when you give that kind of player time and space um, on the on the attack wise, it's really hard to defend. So um, now, look, I think it's going to be great, a great, great challenge again. Like you know, Jack Goodhue's playing as well. So, but he's bang on. But the reality is, is it's a different beast this week. And the the reason that these guys have probably come from behind after slow starts the last two weeks against the Hurricanes and the Chiefs is. Their set piece, you know, uh, the Chiefs ran at 42% at line out. They ran at 50% at scrum, and the, and you know, that's what allows the Crusaders back in the game. And and it wasn't a perfect night at line out. And you know, scrum time, the Blues were, were sharp, but you know, you just can't. You, it has to be a great night up front to allow the Blues to play the game that they're playing. So and and there's no bigger tasks than coming up against Sam Whitelock and Scott Barrett line out defensively and even Mitch Dunshay I thought was pretty effective as well um, off the bench so you know the Blues will be sharpening their axe at line out time because this is this is the true test um, you know for them and that's the exciting thing and in front of their home fans you know that test match atmosphere for guys that you know are looking to get back in the black jersey but there's also guys in there that you know are really excited by the challenge of potentially you know getting into the squad for the first time so no bigger occasion than, than to nail the set piece to allow the Blues game, that complementary rugby, to unfold. Because if, if we don't nail set piece, you just you, you can't get the game going to beat the Crusaders because it, you just can't withstand that amount of pressure and make 200 tackles and win the game.